Caitlin Danielle Treasure coming to you today from my Glamour bathroom. So yeah, um, it's Wednesday. It is April 10, 2012 and I just wanted to come and say hi and talk to you a little bit about, um, I don't know what's going on in my day or conversations I've had or whatever, but if you haven't seen the video that I uploaded Saturday in the studio, please go back and check it out. It's me and... Um, my songwriting academy after school group in the studio the kiddos are recording you'll see some of the parents there and it's I just wanted you all to get a glimpse at what songwriting academy is all about just giving students an opportunity to um, harness their energies their creativity in a constructive way and to use some of the skills that they've learned in their orchestra band choir and um, in language arts classes and it's just a way for them to have fun um, in a in a constructive way and then be creative so please go back and check out that video if you haven't already and please comment and subscribe and rate okay all right and I hope you're not bothered by me asking I know asking you shall receive is how I'm looking at it but um and I know my eye make makeup may be looking a little funky but um I'll just tell you quickly what I'm wearing. I mean, I just really went bold today. So, um, last month I ordered the Urban Decay Book of Shadows number four from uh, Outlook.com. It was on sale for like uh, 20 something bucks. So today was the first day I tried it. And I'm going to tell you that primer, that primer does work to set your eyeshadow. So, ooh, and I'm opening the drawer and it's hard. Okay, here's the drawer with all the goodies in it. And I did use the Urban Decay uh, Primer Potion. And it really does a good job of setting your uh, color and making it more pigmented. And then I used uh, a little of Missionary, which is a sandy color here. And then I used a lot of Midnight Cowgirl. I used some Blue Bus right there and then I used uh, some Midnight Rodeo and I think I used Crystal right here and I <laughs> I blended them all in but because the primer does such a good job of setting it I mean it was bright I had to wipe some off so if it looks still looks crazy that's why so um yeah and I think this might be back on urban on a uh, outlook.com it might it was expiring soon so yeah this is a fifty dollar forty some dollar product but it's there for twenty four so alright so now I want to talk a little bit about um schools urban schools urban education um you know and I'm I'm not really making this video to bash anybody or to uh, sound haughty, haughty or high-minded over anyone, but I am commenting and want to start a dialogue about what can be done to fix urban some urban schools. There are some urban schools that are performing quite well with their academics, with their behaviors, but. Um, there still are a high number of urban schools that are not, that are failure uh, factories. And, I mean, that's an ugly term, but, and the reason I'm talking about this is because uh, my niece, um, who just recently moved back in town, her daughter is in the second grade. And she is at a new school, and it's an urban school. She's been there for about a month, I would say. And the kids are mean, mean, mean. And she's not used to that. There, There is a high percentage of fighting, a high percentage of just disrespect, inappropriate touching that is violent, um, bullying, and we're talking about a second grader who is a mild-mannered, kind-hearted, sweet, gentle kid. And she has been thrown into the lion's den. Um, 
Yeah. So her mother is very, very concerned, um, you know, and we're looking at, you know, I had a conversation with her because oftentimes when you make a decision to make a change in your life, whether that be moving from a community, moving from a school to a different school, but you're making a change that is appropriate for you and to meet the needs of your family, somebody's going to be offended. Somebody's going to get their feelings hurt. Somebody's going to get angry at you because they're going to think you're doing, you're trying to be haughty or you're trying to move up in the world and use them as a stepping stone. Um, I just recommend that she get her out from out of there. If, you know, if working with the school, if being um, involved is not, changing it because maybe they they don't have a parent teacher association or it's very weak or disorganized or they don't have enough concerned parents or parents who are free and available to take on the responsibility of running a, a PTA um, you know one person cannot make the change one person can initiate a dialogue or make be able to um, spearhead a uh, change, but one person is not, I don't think, going to go in and change a climate or culture of violence. So I wouldn't use my child as a social experiment. I would not keep my child there. I really, I really hope that she takes her child out, but my niece, my little niece out, but I, I just want to ask you all, what do you all think is behind the problems that affect urban schools? Is it poverty? Is poverty the main reason why a high number of urban schools deal with bad behavior, fighting, disrespect, insubordination, bullying. And I'm not I am not saying that other schools don't deal with this. So please don't leave this video and say that I said that. I am addressing urban schools because I'm a product of urban schools. I am a product of urban schools. And in my um attending urban schools I saw in some settings it was very calm very structured just a, a good nurturing environment and then in others it was just wild disorderly just crazed behavior and I think as an educator now that I'm older and I know what to look for I think it has to do with structures, protocol, procedures, expectations that are not in place or that are not being implemented consistently that cause the problems to go on. So I don't know. It's personal because it's family. It's personal because it's a little second grader. It's personal because you know, it could be your child. So I don't I don't know. I'm asking you all, what do you think a school that is problematic like that has a high number of misbehaviors, what should they be doing to change? And, you know, kids who are getting bullied, um, you know, it is everybody has to learn how to advocate for themselves, how to protect themselves and how to uh recognize bullying and, and know what to do to sustain, to protect your own interests, you know. So some kids probably will benefit from assertiveness training or self-defense classes or something like that. And then, and you know what, some kids just don't belong in that environment because you, you become like who you're surrounded by. <laughs>